good all by itself. If you know the name of Jesus and all that he's done for you, put your hands sending him on his journey. And you know, I was talking with Rose too. I'm talking a little bit now. Rose sharing a little bit about uh, your situation. But I always thought that you were going to go to Georgia. I told her, I said, Rose, I know it's just a matter of time, but you're going to go to Georgia. So I was a little bit surprised when I heard or Oregon. And then I realized, you know what the Bible says. It says, God says that my ways are not yours. And high as the heavens above are my thoughts, and they are not your thoughts. So truly God is doing a good and a great thing. We do have a message here today. I'm going to make it short because we have a celebration service. And I don't want to keep us here too long. I believe we have food downstairs that may be getting cold. So, without further ado, let's have a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we worship you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and glory, Lord, now as we prepare for your word. Uh, let our minds be alert and our hearts receptive, that we are good ground to sow your seed, that we would not leave out of this place the same way we walked in, Lord, that we would be doers of for me personally, Lord, that the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. 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 You know, someone, someone once said that I'd rather be in a storm with Jesus than a sunny day without him. I'd rather be in a storm with Jesus than a sunny day without him. Our scripture for today's message comes from Mark 4, verses 35 and 41. Mark 4, verses 31, 35 to 41. And in this scripture, or actually right before this scripture, Jesus is just finishing teaching a large crowd of people. And he says to his disciples, I want you to take me to the other side of the Lake of Galilee. And so they all get in the boat and they take off. And this is where our scripture picks up. Verses 35 through 41. 
and it reads, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat, as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I want to talk to you briefly this morning from the subject, God cares. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, God cares. God cares. God cares. Now you see, the storms in this text are representative of the storms we have in our lives. The trials and the tribulations and all of the things that are are going on in our life and much to our despair. The same way that the disciples responded to the storm, we often do the same thing. You see, they got caught up in the winds and the waves and, 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 and felt like they were all alone in their circumstances, in their situations, and they started questioning, does God care? And so they asked the question, and I, I don't know, maybe there's somebody here this afternoon now that has been in a storm and, and you, you, you felt like you were all alone and you were all caught up in the winds and the waves and you started feeling like God doesn't care. I believe I'm talking to somebody this morning. And so what happens is that when we take our eyes off of Jesus and we start focusing in more on our circumstances, that unbelief starts to sink in. And we start to feel like Jesus doesn't care. And we forget that Jesus is right in the boat with you. And so you might say, well, Pastor, what do you do in a storm? And so the first thing that we have to do when we're going through these stormy days and these storms in our life is we have to take our eyes off of the circumstances. We have to take our eyes off of the problem and look at the solution and realize that Jesus is in the boat. You know, Paul writes about it and he says that, that God will use every circumstance, everything that happens in our lives to bring about his good will for us. And James says it like this in James 1, 2, and 3. He says, count it all joy when you're going through trials and tribulations. Because there's a purpose behind these trials and tribulations. Oh, y'all saying, oh, Pastor, uh, what are you talking about? And, and you know, it's easy to stand up here and say these things. But when you're going through something, when life is hitting you hard, when you, you just lost a loved one or something, then you understand the gravity of this message and how Jesus told them to take him to the other side. And when the storms arise in our lives and the gravity of what's going on seems overwhelming, just like them, we often do the same thing. We start questioning and wondering, Lord, uh, where are you? And, and, and truth be told, all the time, he's right there with you. No, believe it or not, he's right inside of you. We have the Holy Spirit with us all the time. But it's easy for us to get caught up in it when we take our eyes off of our circumstances. But the purposes, the, uh, the, the, the storms that God allows in our life have a purpose. 
And we have to remember how to deal with these storms in our lives. And so just take a moment and think about the winds and the waves blowing. And, and these are supposed to be fishermen who are, are trained in the seas. And so we can imagine that it must have been a bad storm for these fishermen to be wondering and worrying and, and all of the things that are going on in their life and, 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 and that they see. And, and I want you just to think about it from your perspective. Maybe there's something going on in your life either then or now. And I, I say it like that because you can't have sunshine without the rain. You can't have a sunny day without knowing that there's gonna be some storms going on in your life. And so you can think about how you're going to respond or how you responded in the past. How did you handle it? It's all the sense of what Jesus did. It says that Jesus spoke to the storms. Jesus spoke to the storms. In verse 39 it says that he arose and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace! Be still. That's right. Now, think about it. When you're going through a, a, a situation, you're going to want to start shouting, the devil, you get behind me. And, and, but no, Jesus said, peace. Be still. He rebuked it. But the words he used when he rebuked it was peace. Be still. You know, I thought about it. I was like, Lord, wait a minute. Why would you say peace? Be still. You see, because when we're caught up in a situation, we get all frustrated and all fluttered and, and we start taking things far out of context and before you know it, God is no longer even in the picture. Because see, they didn't even realize that the King of Kings was right there with them. The, the Lord of Lords was yes, right there yes, with them. Yes. The Alpha and the Omega was right there with them. All the power they needed in the yes, world was sitting yes. right there with them and yes. spoke a word to them yes. 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 and said, take me to the other side. Mm -hmm. And so I want to remind you this morning that when a storm comes up in your life, yes. take a look at Jesus. Yes. Don't get all frustrated and fluttered and, and, and caught up in what's going on around you and, and start talking about peace. Lord, peace. Peace over my household. Yes, yes. Peace over my job. Yes. Peace over my marriage. Peace over my children. Yes. Peace. Yes. Now that peace that 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 the Bible talks about, it says it surpasses all understanding because it just doesn't make sense naturally to start asking for peace. I want to ask Jesus, get this out of my life. Jesus, change this. We want to ask for things that we feel in the natural world, but the truth is that we have to understand that the spiritual realm yes. far outseeds everything in the natural realm. And so in verse 39, Jesus rebukes and says, Peace, be still. Stay calm. Speak to the, to the storms in your life. Don't be afraid to go. Verse 40 says, but he said to them, why are you fearful? Mm -hmm. How is it that you have no faith? Mm -hmm. You know, fear is the enemy of faith. Mm -hmm. And if you allow fear to come in, it will rob you of all your, your peace, mm -hmm. your faith. Uh, you, you know, I read a book once, I believe it was by Joyce Meyer, and she wrote a simple statement that stayed with me throughout. She said, do it afraid. Just do it afraid. Don't look at what's going on. Don't worry about the feelings you have and you're going through. Just get in the boat and go. And trust and believe that God is going to see you through. And so in Numbers 13, uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, is the story of the 10 spies that, that, that Moses sends into the promised land to 
scout out the promised land before they go in. And because the 10 spies came back with an evil report, the Bible says that all of the Israelites were not allowed to go into, into the promised land. Yeah. But they came back and, and they, they, they said that, that the land was filled with giants and that they were like grasshoppers 